We have Democratic Congressman Raja Krishnamoorthy of Illinois with us. Thanks for being with us, sir. Thanks, Brianna. Okay, so you've heard the president, and uh, well, we've heard from sources close to him. He's the indications are that he's going to sign this. Are you at all concerned that he might not, or do you think that he is going to? I'm hopeful. I think a lot of people are optimistic that uh, the brawl over the wall has ended at the, at this point, and that we can move on. Um, I introduced a bill with uh, Paul Mitchell of Michigan. He's a Republican. It's called the Shutdown Shutdowns Bill, which basically takes shutdowns off the table as a negotiating tactic going forward. The American people don't want shutdowns. So you you have said that you would support a physical barrier in some places on the border as part of border security. So when you look at that number, $1.37 billion for a barrier, uh, is, is that enough? I think it's reasonable. Again, I think this was based on a fact-based assessment done by the appropriators and people who actually know uh, what is needed on the border. So I'm okay with that. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz has said that convicted drug kingpin El Chapo should pay for the wall. This is what he tweeted. He said, let's pass the El Chapo Act and make El Chapo pay to secure our border. Um, I mean, it's getting a lot of attention, but do you think that that is any sort of serious proposition? <laughs> um, a very interesting. I don't know how much El Chapo has, but if he wants to, if we can use his money instead of taxpayer money to uh, fund this particular appropriations package, uh, why not? All right, so I, I want to ask you about another story that we're following. The vice president is blasting Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Uh, you're familiar with her comments. She trafficked in an anti-Semitic trope with one of her tweets. She has apologized, but the vice president wrote that her tweets were a disgrace and her apology was inadequate. And he goes on to say that anti-Semitism has no place in the United States Congress. Uh, what do you make of this response uh, and also his silence over offensive remarks that the president has made that are anti-Semitic. That's right. I, I condemn these remarks. They have no place in uh, the United States Congress. And I'm, 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 I'm also glad that the caucus and Nancy Pelosi took that step as well immediately upon seeing them. However, you point out something very important, which is that uh, in, in those statements by the vice president, he said nothing about anti-Semitism having no place in the White House. We know that, um, you know, the president said that the people in Charlottesville, those neo-Nazis, were quote-unquote very fine people. And so I just ask him, would he be willing to condemn those remarks? Because I think that is what's needed uh, from folks like him right now. The senator and Democratic presidential candidate Amy Klobuchar says that ideas like Medicare for All and the Green New Deal are aspirations. That was the word she used, a quote, aspirations, that provide a framework for discussion. Let's listen to her. We need to put out a negotiating bid here. I don't see it as something that we can get rid of all these industries or do this in a few years. That doesn't make sense to me or reduce air travel. But what does make sense to me is to start doing concrete things and put some aspirations out there on climate change. So some Democrats, like Amy Klobuchar, they're essentially suggesting that these ideas are fantasy, but there's a ton of people in your party who love these ideas. Are you worried that we're going to see a big split among Democrats and it's going to be really big for, or really bad for your party? No, I don't. I, I think that this uh, Green New Deal resolution, I read it. Um, I think it's bold. It sets a goal. Uh, but my constituents ask questions such as, um, who's going to pay for it? And um, what are the details? And um, similarly, they ask questions like that about every single piece of legislation that comes before us that we might um, ask Bold. them to support. Is, is it realistic? You've read it. Is it realistic? Um, I think uh, in 10 years, going to uh, the type of economy that this envisions seems uh, very aggressive. But on the other hand, the climate change crisis is so pressing. Um, I come from uh, the solar industry. Um, I started the Bipartisan Solar Caucus for the first time here in, in Congress. And so I care very much about this issue. I'm trying to bring people from the other side along so we can actually uh, put solutions in pace, place as fast as possible. All right, Congressman Raja Krishnamoorthy, thank you.